Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple with ilovepathology.com. In today's session, we will learn a very interesting topic in diseases of cardiovascular system that is cardiomyopathies. So, what are cardiomyopathies? These are heterogeneous group of diseases of the myocardium which are associated with either mechanical and or electrical dysfunction. Okay. So, it can be either a mechanical dysfunction or electrical dysfunction which usually exhibits inappropriate ventricular hypertrophy or dilatation. Right? And they are basically due to variety of causes which are frequently genetic in nature. So, cardiomyopathies are broadly categorized into primary and secondary cardiomyopathy. Primary meaning which involves predominantly the heart whereas secondary is basically the involvement of the myocardium as a part of systemic disorder or multi-organ disorder. Further, primary cardiomyopathies are categorized based on whether the etiology is predominantly genetic or acquired in nature. So, recently the studies have revealed that many cardiomyopathies they are caused by genetic mutations. Now, what are these genetic mutations? The mutations involve proteins means myocardial proteins which are involved either in energy production of the myocardium, cardiac muscle contraction, it could be cell to cell connections, I mean the proteins involved in cell to cell connections or the proteins which are involved in cytoskeleton and extracellular matrix linkage. Okay, So, any of these proteins you know they can be mutated leading on to cardiomyopathies, particularly when the cardiomyopathies are because of genetic mutations. All these mutations leads to either abnormal heart contraction or relaxation and lead to disrupted ion transport and that disruption of ion transport leads to arrhythmias, cardiac arrhythmias. So, there are three distinct pathological patterns of cardiomyopathies. One is dilated cardiomyopathy. Second one is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The third one is restrictive cardiomyopathy. Okay. Dilated as the name says, it is dilated. Hypertrophic, the you know, ventricular and the interventricular septum, you know, cardiac muscle is grossly hypertrophied. The last one is restrictive cardiomyopathies. Dilated cardiomyopathy is the most common type of cardiomyopathy, whereas restrictive is the least frequent type of cardiomyopathy. In today's session, let us learn in detail about the dilated cardiomyopathy. In the subsequent sessions, we will learn about hypertrophic and restrictive cardiomyopathy. So, dilated cardiomyopathy, as the name says, it is characterized morphologically and functionally by progressive dilatation of the cardiac system or progressive dilatation of the heart and also involves contractile dysfunction, which means systolic dysfunction. Okay. Usually, though we say it is dilated, it also involves some kind of hypertrophy of the cardiac musculature. You diagnose dilated cardiomyopathy, I mean primary dilated cardiomyopathy, when you rule out the underlying causes, that of ischemic heart disease, valvular disease, hypertension, congenital heart disease, you rule out all these things and then you make a diagnosis of dilated cardiomyopathy. If no cause is found, then it is referred to as primary or idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy. Okay. If there is an underlying cause, then it will be dilated, but it is secondary cardiomyopathy. Right. So, I told you there are genetic causes of cardiomyopathy, more so for dilated cardiomyopathy, where 50 percent of the dilated cardiomyopathy cases are familial in nature. The mutations affect proteins of the cytoskeletal pro protein, sarcolimal proteins or even the nuclear envelope like lamin A or C. But the most important mutation involves titin protein or TTN truncation. Okay, 10 to 20 percent of cases of dilated cardiomyopathy is because of this mutation or TTN truncation. The inheritance patterns, I said right, it is familiar. The inheritance patterns most commonly autosomal dominant with variable penetrance, 
it can also be extinct it can also be autosomal recessive and rarely it can be mitochondrial inheritance so basically all kind of inheritance patterns is observed in cases of dilated cardiomyopathy but the most common is autosomal dominant type one thing is uh, noteworthy is dystrophin gene mutations okay we have, we, we have seen in my earlier sessions that dystrophin gene mutations can cause muscular dystrophies these can also cause dilated cardiomyopathy as a primary feature okay they can present with conduction abnormalities because they share common developmental origin now what are all the other factors I, as of now we studied that the genetic factors are predominantly involved and we looked into lot of genetic fact i mean we we looked into various genetic factors implicated in dilated cardiomyopathy now there are other causes as well what are these other causes of dilated cardiomyopathy it could be myocarditis okay viral infections particularly the coxsackie virus b infections it can result in inflammation leading on to dilated cardiomyopathy alcohol and toxins can also lead to dilated cardiomyopathy particularly ethanol or acetaldehyde it causes direct toxicity thiamine deficiency it results in beriberi and can lead to dilated cardiomyopathy poisoning with cobalt you know that's or cardiotoxic chemotherapy can also result in dilated cardiomyopathy there is something called peripartum cardiomyopathy what is that this is cardiomyopathy which occurs in late pregnancy or even in postpartum period it is basically related to anti angiogenic mediators for example sfl flt1 or prolactin fragments it can either be caused by genetic or hypertensive or metabolic or even nutritional factors there are it's multifactorial in origin okay the dilated cardiomyopathy occurring in late pregnancy or even postpartum can be multifactorial dilated cardiomyopathy can also result due to iron overload particularly when you talk about hemochromatosis or even repeated blood transfusions where there will be iron overload okay what what is the reason for that it can cause oxidative stress and enzyme dysfunction leading on to dilated cardiomyopathy there is something called supraphysiologic stress for example persistent tachycardia hyperthyroidism fetal stress you know or catecholamine excess all these things can result in necrosis of myocardium focally and then leading on to dilated cardiomyopathy okay it can the cardiomyopathy can also result from pheochromocytoma or even cocaine or even dopamine all these are etiological factors for dilated cardiomyopathy which are non genetic in nature one interesting kind of dilated cardiomyopathy is takosubo cardiomyopathy this is also referred to as stress induced cardiomyopathy it's triggered by emotional stress what happens when the person is emotionally stressed okay the there is sudden surge in the catecholamine adrenaline are released okay and you should know that the beta 2 adrenergic receptors are most concentrated in the apex of the heart and because these are activated there is intense calcium overload okay and then finally it can result in coronary focal coronary vasoconstriction normally calcium is contractile in nature right because there is calcium overload this excessive amount of calcium kind of stuns the myocardium right and there will be sudden left ventricular dysfunction particularly at the apex of the heart okay it's also called as broken heart syndrome because usually it is found i mean because of emotional stress due to you know broken heart or love failures or whatever it can result in stress induced cardiomyopathy and morphologically the heart resembles the shape of takosubo and that's why the name takosubo cardiomyopathy takosubo is a japanese term tako is actually a, an octopus but a subo is a pot this is an octopus trap the heart the dilated you know apex results like japanese trap to catch these octopuses right so that's why it's also referred to as takosubo cardiomyopathy microscopically as i told you the heart is enlarged heavy and flabby usually weighs more than i mean around 2 to 3 times than normal the dilatation affects all the chambers but in the takosubo cardiomyopathy the predominantly the dilatation is at the left apex 
what really happens when there is dilatation there can be stasis and this stasis can result in mural thrombi and there will be risk of thromboembolism and please note that there should be no primary valvular alterations if at all you find any valvular abnormalities that is because of functional abnormality because of chamber dilatation microscopical histological findings are very non specific because the morphological changes do not always match the clinical severity there can be variable amount of fibrosis which includes interstitial and endocardial fibrosis you can find scars in the subendocardium which says that there could be some amount of ischemia earlier hypertrophied muscle cells can be seen with enlarged nuclei and some of the myocytes may be stretched or irregular these are all non specific findings of dilated cardiomyopathy you cannot make a diagnosis of dilated cardiomyopathy based on histology alone but then there is something called ttn truncation by dcm this is what we saw right 10 to 20% of the cases are because of ttn truncation right the 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 protein involved in titin right so what happens in these cases myocytes for some strange reasons they show hyperchromatic and distorted nuclei okay and these distorted irregularly shaped nuclei they look like ninja star you no know? they they are ninja star like appearance though this still is a morphological you know non significant finding but if you find these you know uh, in more than 5% of myocytes then it suggests that this could be because of titin mutation so that's a clue to say that the cardiomyopathy is because of titin mutation only when you find these changes in more than 5% of myocytes cardiac myocytes so look at this these are truncations of titin caused causing dilated cardiomyopathy these are these ninja star like appearance so what how do these patient manifest clinically the core issue you know is ineffective contraction the heart is enlarged but then the contractile property is actually not really good so ejection fraction is very less less than 25% but normally is around 50 to 65% right typical age is around 20 to 50 years it can occur in children the secondary causes or even the genetic underlying genetic causes can be seen in children symptoms are usually of congestive heart failure like shortness of breath fatigue reduced exercise tolerance and the very common findings in dilated cardiomyopathy patients are secondary mitral regurgitation I mean, there can be arrhythmias, thromboembolism, as I told you, because of mural thrombi, and the outcome, the death in these patients, is most often from progressive failure or a sudden onset of arrhythmias. Very high mortality, around 10 to 15 percent per year. Treatment: Some of these patients may improve with drugs or something called biventricular pacing, but you know, in advanced cases, cardiac transplantation is the only. Treatment. There are devices called ventricular assist devices which can lead to long term improvement in some of these patients. So, that's all about dilated cardiomyopathy. Thank you for watching. In my next video, I will be discussing in detail about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and then we'll look into what restrictive cardiomyopathy is. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Do comment if you have anything to. So if you find this video useful, do consider subscribing and please don't forget to share. Thank you.